Hello and welcome to Kedrick Farms. Have you ever run into the situation where you've got a mod and it's just not quite working the way you want? Well, this is going to be the start of a new series here, hopefully, where we take a look at basic modding things, uh, edits to existing mods, and see what we can do to, you know, fix things up. A lot of times the issue that you have with a mod is actually relatively straightforward to fix if you just know what to look for. So in today's example, we've got this awesome uh, New Holland sprayer here that we want to use in our series. But unfortunately, the wheelbase is just a bit too narrow here by default to get it up on our spray cradle trailer. However, one thing that I noticed when using this mod is that if I jump into it and unfold the sprayer, as we get it unfolded, the wheelbase is going to actually widen out here. And with the wheels widened, it's actually a little bit wider than the uh, spray cradle here on the trailer. And so that tells me that if I could just animate these wheels and have this be an adjustable setting so that we could load this up onto the trailer without uh, all of these shenanigans that you're seeing here, this would be a perfect mod. And so they're either too narrow or too wide. Why can't we just make that an adjustable setting? And so that's what we're going to do today. So the first thing that we need to do, as always, is make sure that we have completely exited Farming Simulator in 2019. We do not want to have the game open as that's going to interrupt our mod editing. The next thing we need to do is find the mod that we want to edit. In this case, it's this New Holland Guardian SP400F. And we're going to go ahead and right click on that and do an extract all. This is going to pop up with a window similar to this where you're able to extract all those files, we're gonna just accept the default in this case to extract the files into a folder named the same thing as the mod zip file. After you extract it, it should open up the folder containing all of the mod files. In this case, there's only a single mod in this uh, zip file. And so we're gonna find the mod here. It's gonna be named the same thing as the i3d file. We're gonna open the XML file version of the mod. All of the code that you, I've edited here for this particular mod, I'll put in a link in the description to a site called Pastebin, which allows me to copy and paste snippets of code into a file so that you can easily copy and paste those for yourself. If you want to make a change like this, it'll be a lot easier to do if you're not trying to type everything in that you see on the screen. With the XML file opened, we're going to look for a section in here called animations. In the animations section, we can see that there's this animation for folding. This is what happens when we press X to fold and unfold our sprayer. While this can be pretty intimidating to look at when you're first getting into it, it's really pretty straightforward. Inside of the animation, we have all the different parts that we want to move. And in this case, the node identifies which actual part we're going to move. And so in this case, the two lines that we're most interested in for the wheels are going to be the axis left and the axis right uh, nodes. These nodes are tied to the index path that you're going to find if you open the mod up in Giants Editor. And in this case, the modder is using friendly names here. So if we take a look at this axis left and then scroll down to the bottom of the file, you're going to see here that there's an I3D mapping section. And this is where you can give a friendly name to a node number uh, in Giants Editor. And this is going to correlate with the index path inside Giants Editor. So if I open up Giants Editor and we click on axis left here, we're going to be able to see in our attributes window, which I can move over here, that the index path for the axis left node is in the root component, zero, and then it's zero, zero. And so for example, similarly, axis right is gonna be in the root component, which is the zero before the caret, and then the first index is zero, axis right is zero, one. And so once you kind of understand this index path nomenclature, everything else gets to be a lot easier to understand in the XML files. Now that we understand that this axis left is the nodes that we're looking for, if we come back up here into the parts, these are the two parts that we want to grab out of the folding animation, uh, as this is the left and right um, axis or wheels uh, that we're going to move. And then just to understand the other properties here, you have a start and an end time. This is 
at what point during the animation these things should start and stop moving. And then we also have the end trans and start trans, which is where those parts should be based on the location they are in Giant's editor and how far they should move. In this case, we're moving the um, axis left 0.508 in a positive direction, and then we're moving the axis right 0.508 in a negative direction, so out from the middle of the mod, essentially. You can also see that you have the ability to do start and end rotations, and so that's more of a rotation rather than them actually physically moving. And so that's really the two main things that you're gonna see when you're thinking about animations in Farming Simulator. What we wanna do is take these two lines here and we wanna create a new animation. So I'm gonna highlight these two lines and I'm gonna push Control X to cut. And then we're gonna come up here to the top of the list. You can do this wherever, top of the list, bottom of the list, it doesn't matter. And we're going to create a new animation. We're gonna give it a name and we're gonna call this axis movement because that is uh, what we're trying to name. And then you can see I'm using Notepad++ for my text editing, and so it has some autocomplete abilities here. Uh, and so it's automatically added this closing tag. It's very important that you have a closing tag following any tag that you open. So this backslash here, or forward slash actually, I guess it is, um, the forward slash here indicates that this is a closing tag where this one doesn't have a slash, so it's the opening tag. And then inside of here, we're gonna paste these two lines that we just copied so that we now have a new animation called axis movement that is set up specifically for handling the axis left and axis right movement. So they will no longer automatically move out when you fold or unfold the sprayer. So now that we have an animation, I wanna be able to control this animation with my mouse. And so in order to do that, we're going to scroll down just below the animation section to this cylindered section, and furthermore into this moving tools section. And so the moving tools section is where we're going to add a new section for ourselves. And so what we wanna do is in here, we're going to add another one of these moving tool sections. I'm gonna go ahead and create an opening tag and do moving tool. And you can see again, I'm getting the autocomplete from Notepad++, I highly recommend this tool. As soon as I complete this element, I get the uh, corresponding closing element there automatically, which is very handy. And then here, we need to specify the node that defines the moving tool. And so in this case, I don't wanna have to have something for each wheel independently. I want to uh, capture a node that contains both of them. And so in here, I'm going to name this uh, wheels and we're gonna come back into Giants Editor, which we had open before. And you can see here, we have this parent transform here called wheels, which contains both the axis left and the axis right. And so we're gonna go ahead and grab that. And so wheels is index path zero, zero. So you can just highlight this and push control C to copy. And we're gonna come right back in here to our i3d file. And we're gonna add a new i3d uh, mapping. And so I'm just going to do the same thing that you already see here, which is create an i3d. And then I'm going to do id equal, and we called it wheels. And then I'm going to say node equals, and I'm going to put what we copied out of Giants Editor there. And I'm going to make sure that I close uh, this element out. And so this is a shorthand way to close an element on a single line. So up here where we're doing something like these moving part uh, elements and then you have a closing one after it because you need to put something in the middle of it, we don't have anything to put in the middle. So we're gonna close it on one line just like this. So with the i3d mapping done, we can now refer to node 00, zero as wheels instead of uh, some cryptic uh, number here. Alternatively, if you don't wanna use the i3d mapping, we could totally just put the 00, zero right here in uh, the node. I just find it a little bit easier sometime to have a name in here that I can actually refer to. Otherwise, the XML starts to turn into just a lot of numbers and it's kind of hard to read. So once we have the moving tool here, this is where things get just a little bit more complicated. If you're not familiar with all of the different things you can do in an XML file, which I definitely am not, 
sometimes your best bet is to go and look at another mod that does what you want to do and copy and paste. There's nothing wrong with uh, using an example from another mod to help you figure out how to do things. There's not a lot of great documentation from Giants on some of this stuff. And so I've learned a lot of what I know by copying and pasting and looking at other mods. My only cautionary tale there is don't copy and paste something if you're not really sure what it does. Um, sometimes you need to play around with that and understand it because it could lead to more problems. Uh, if you don't understand what you're putting into your mod. Uh, but in this case, I went out and found a couple of different examples of other sprayers and found that there's quite a few sprayers that allow you to adjust the wheels uh, with your mouse. From that, I got a uh, little piece of code here, which you can see an example down here. And so you can kind of get a feel for it already. We've got this controls section here. And in this case, it's Axis Sprayer Arm is a defined uh, thing in the game already. And you can determine, you know, when you move the mouse, which way uh, the animation goes. You can determine uh, when you're moving the mouse, how fast uh, the animation plays. And then you can also specify an icon to display next to it in the F1 help menu. And so in the base game, there are already several mods that have the ability to spread the Axis wheelbase. And so I am going to use that as my access, and this is really going to determine uh, which control in the game you're going to map this to. And so if you're looking to use this uh, same technique for things like pickup trucks, uh, opening the hoods or doors on mods, uh, you might wanna find a different access if this is one that's already been used so that you're not overlapping uh, the same controls necessarily. And so in our case, we're going to not invert the access. We're going to take a mouse speed factor of 0.7. This seems to be pretty common for this kind of thing. And then there is actually an icon for wheelbase translate X, which is gonna be uh, the little icon that shows the wheels moving in and out uh, right there in the HUD. And so this is really handy for us. You don't actually need the icon, uh, but it's really nice to be able to indicate uh, with a visual what it's going to do. Then the last thing that we need to do is uh, actually fire off our animation here alongside these controls. And so we can do that simply by putting an animation tag in here, setting the axis movement is our animation name that we came up with above. And so we're gonna reference that animation name and then you have the ability to uh, specify the animation speed. Uh, again, this one is something that you might wanna play with if it feels like whatever you're trying to animate is moving too fast or too slow. Uh, in our, my case, this is the common value that I've seen across quite a few mods in this scenario. And one other thing that we forgot when we were going through this originally is that we're also going to need to reference the wheel indices in this moving tool. Wheels are actually created separately outside of the i3d file, and so they're added in the XML. And so we need to tell uh, this moving tool element, which wheels we actually want to also affect. And so while this would have moved all of the textures in the game, the wheel indices themselves won't move without uh, this bit here. And so we definitely want uh, all of our wheels and the collisions with our wheels to move along with the tool. And then likewise, there's a sound that plays as everything kind of moves out. And so we want that to play as well. Two steps to make sure that you don't forget is to save you the file after you're done editing. There's been so many times that I've made changes to an XML file and forgot to hit the save button before jumping into the game and you get in there and none of your changes are working. In Notepad++, you could tell that you've saved because this disk will be red if you have not. So if we make a small change here, it turns red indicating that we have not saved the file. The other thing that you need to make sure to do is delete the zipped version of the mod. If Farming Simulator finds a zipped version of the mod and an unzipped version of the mod, like in our case up here, it's going to try and use the zipped version most likely, which means again, you'll get into the game and not be testing your changes. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hit delete on our zipped version of the mod and jump into the game. Back in the game here, we should be able to hop into our new Holland sprayer here. And if we bring up the F1 menu, you're gonna see that we now have a left mouse option. If I hold the left mouse button down, you can see we've got the um, left and right arrow keys with that cool uh, tire widening icon. 
And so you can see here, as I move my mouse back and forth, our tires are moving in and out. That's going to allow us to come up here to the uh, step deck trailer. I'm gonna adjust our width here a little bit and we should be able to put the sprayer now on this trailer without all the wonkiness of it, uh, you know, being all out of shape. If you watch my latest Mercer County video, uh, I was really excited about this sprayer and then we went to put it on the trailer and it didn't fit. And so I know a lot of people have been excited about this spray setup that's coming out from uh, Perma's Modding. In fact, this trailer and uh, the sprayer cradle are both already uh, released. However, uh, there's an edit coming to this soon that I think a lot of people are going to want to be using this trailer. And, you know, this was a base game or a Giants released mod on the mod hub that uh, you just couldn't put on the trailer. And a lot of the smaller or normal sized self-propelled sprayers, I was running into the same issue where I couldn't get them onto this trailer and I really wanted to use this trailer. And so now we're able to come in and kind of modify those to work more successfully here. And just to demo, everything's working good. We don't have any weird hitboxes or anything like that now. Uh, and so I'm really excited because uh, I'm looking forward to doing a fair amount of spraying on this save. Hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. If you have, hit the like button, it helps the channel out. If you're new to the channel, subscribe for daily farm sim content. We do a variety of things here on the channel between miscellaneous small modding and editing type videos like this uh, to tutorials to Let's Play videos. I also live stream on Tuesday and Thursday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. As I mentioned earlier in the video, all the code from today's video will be in the description with a paste bin link. If you have any issues running through this or you have suggestions for other videos that you would like to see in this vein, drop a comment in the video below and I'm happy to take some suggestions, always looking for ideas for new videos. That's all for today. Kedrick out.